Hello everyone, I'm Jamie and welcome to a very special virtual assembly all about the fantastic football book series Roy the Rovers. Now Roy the Rovers is perfect for children like you, children aged sort of 7 to 12 uh, and has 16 books in total in the series, 8 novels and 8 graphic novels. So which means there's plenty of books for you to get your hands on this summer for your summer reading. Now some of you may not actually know much about Roy the Rovers and his sister Rocky, so take a look at this. Now I'm joined by award-winning author Tom Palmer, who is the writer of all eight Roy of the Rovers illustrated fiction titles. Hi Tom, great to have you here with us. Hi, thank you for having me on. Thank you very much. No, no worries. Um, so yeah, I thought we'd go through some questions and answers about um, the books and the Roy of the Rovers series. So um, particularly to kick things off, uh, how do you start writing a Roy of the Rovers book? Um, a plan. I always, I always make a plan, and um, but I do, I do have sort of um, a scrapbook as well. So when I write books, I have scrapbooks that sort of um, they, they're full of like the characters who I'm going to be working with. But also, what I do is because because I've done quite a few, I'll have different plans for different books, and just to remind myself of what what's happened in the other ones, and and then once I've got all that in place, I'll start to develop a plan. And I, I think like planning a story is a really good way of it saves you time to be quite honest because when you go back you don't have to do so much rewriting yeah and that's so you can kind of think through how the story will go before so yeah. you get putting pen to paper which is really see handy and i guess with that in mind obviously like you say you you've got your folder and you've got sort of what happened in previous books um in there and i guess when you when you start revisiting that folder um and the previous books before writing the next one what do you like most about writing the royal the rovers books I, like, I, I mean, I love I love the football. I love I love the 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 drama and the peril, sort of on and off the pitch. But the bit I like most is is the banter between these two. I don't know what I don't know because I don't know where it comes from, but they they sort of they just give it give it something. And when Roy's getting too big for his boots, Rocky sort of knocks him down. And but they can be quite tender and tender because they've got stuff going on at home. And I just think I think when you're writing about footballers, you've got to make them realistic characters as well like not just someone kicking a ball around on a pitch but you've got to know a bit about what's in the back of their mind when they're playing football because footballers are human beings and they have stuff going on in their lives and I think balancing the football with the personal lives of, of these two and their banter is, is the thing that I enjoy most. That's, the, that's what really makes the series so great is obviously the 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 peril and the sort of the home lives of the characters coming through as well there's a lot of uh times where Roy and Rocky have to deal both with obviously football problems but also the problems and issues that a lot of young people are going to be facing today in, in yeah. their lives. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that and how you sort of work that into the book? Yeah I mean I think I think Roy Roy is a bit he's he's very football driven and he tries his best to be kind and he's he's sweet and and he's ba he's based on the the character from the, the the comic books like from the 1950s and 60s so when when we're writing him rob and i we he's sort of he's quite he's quite predictable and a secure character whereas rocky we we made up rocky you know to as a sister because we really wanted to push the women's game as well and um, and she she is is a really powerful sort of committed footballer but she's got stuff going on and she has a lot of doubt and um, she she is frustrated by the lack of um opportunities for, for female footballers and um, she resents um quite a few things to do with how the men's game gets a lot of stuff and, and the women's game doesn't and um I, and but also personally deep down she's going through a massive trauma there's one of her parents is very ill and, and she's struggling a lot with that. As I go into schools, I meet children who are going through that. I, when, when, when um, I was their age, when I was Rocky's age, um, 
that was happening to me, to my dad. And, and so um, I'm kind of I'm kind of drawing on on what I know are some of the, the issues to do with anxiety and um, and stress in, in school and, and, and in life being a teenager. But I'm also drawing from things that happened to me when I was young. And I'll be honest, I found it quite cathartic. I found it good to write about. I think I think writing about sad things can help you make you happier and so I've written about some quite sad things that happened to them and it's helped me sort of feel better about things that have happened to me in the past and I would definitely say if anyone is interested in, in doing that writing a diary and expressing your feelings just to yourself is a, quite a good way to go to help make yourself feel a bit happier. Yeah absolutely so it's so important to see express our feelings and kind of work through it and that's what's so great about the books it doesn't just sort of feature those issues it also shows how Rocky and Roy like cope with those issues or manage those issues even if yeah. they can't necessarily overcome them which I think is fantastic I know you in there you mentioned uh, Rob which is obviously Rob Williams uh, the yeah. guy who writes our fantastic Roy the Rovers graphic novels um, and yeah like can you sort of give us maybe a little bit of uh, an insight into how you feel the books differ um, from the graphic novels in terms of taking Roy and Rocky and what kind of what duration you take them in compared to the graphic novels yeah I think and I, th I think we we agreed this Rob Williams and I like that the book the graphic novels which are fantastic and spectacular spectacular and very sort of um action driven because they're visual they're much more visual and you don't get the you don't get sort of going into the 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 deep sort of thoughts that are going on through the characters and that they're out there on the surface um but they and, and mine maybe are, because it's a novel it's a different form of a story isn't it it's fiction it's a novel you can go in deep into people's psychology into their minds and see how they're feeling whether it's harder with a graphic graphic novel but um i the, the thing that i've loved about doing these is that the books dovetail so it goes novel graphic novel novel graphic novel um and i the first two or three chapters of of this are um, based on on the um, the last sort of three or four, three or four pages of the previous graphic novel and and the way they dovetail so you can actually read if you read like the first three chapters of this you could compare what it's like in the last two, sort of three or four pages of the graphic novel um, that came before it and I think that's really interesting from a writing point of view for teachers who are who are watching just from a a writing point of view how I draw from the graphic novels they, that determines how I begin my novel and it's a bit like you know those games where you write something and someone writes the next thing and someone writes the next thing it's a bit like that and I, I've loved it I've absolutely loved it and I've learned a lot from working with a graphic novelist um, to 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 become a better writer I think and that's me it's so exciting to kind of see how the visual form yeah. of a story can kind of then change into words and you can then see the power that yeah. words will sort of bring to those moments yeah. just as much as sort of seeing it with you yeah. sort of visually which is great now i need yeah. to delve into your mind in particular tom because i've got to ask you a very tough question in that what was your favorite book in the royal the rover series to write my favorite book um i i i love writing roy and i know you'll appreciate this roy but i love writing rocky even more she's just i would like I used to listen to authors. They used to say, oh, my characters just write themselves. And I've written 50 books and characters have never written themselves. They don't exist outside my control, but she does, <laughs> Rocky <laughs> does. But, and I love writing her books. And and, and I love it that, that Rebellion have and, and been so fantastic and, and, and gone from like having a book that is completely about Rocky and Rocky's point of view, even though it's in the Roy of the Rovers series. And this this one, the latest one is, I've loved writing this because Rocky's really come into herself and she started, she was quite unsure of herself when she was sort of a bit younger, but now she's getting more confident. And she, this, this is Fionn, her, the, the, the young woman who she really looks up to. But in this book, she has to challenge Fionn because Fionn does something Rocky doesn't feel comfortable about and, and, and Rocky challenges her. I, I love that about her, how she's got a, a really strong sense of justice and it doesn't, it doesn't come from me. Well, I do have a relatively strong sense of justice, but her personality, it just, it just seems to be sort of sat here on this wall with me. She's, I love right now, and this is my favourite. Tom's going <laughs> to read uh, to you all uh, a segment of the book, um, yeah, Game Changer. Um, and yeah, whilst Rocky has to deal with a lot in her life, uh, 
She's also now part of the newly formed uh, Melchester Rovers women's football team. Uh, and yeah, here's a, a, a little snippet into what you can expect in the book and kind of what you can uh, find Rocky doing. Serena Heracles formed a large circle with the 20 or so players who had come out for the training session. They concentrated on one touch passing at speed. Rocky knew why she'd done this. She was making sure everyone was together, focusing on each other, not the noises she could still hear from outside the stadium and the memories of what had just happened here. Football, only football. The team, each other, together stronger. Now that night was falling, a dew was forming on the pitch, causing the ball to zip off the grass quickly, meaning it was hard to control. Rocky knew how much the first touch of the ball meant to her new coach, and she gave it everything to make sure the first touch was perfect. As she controlled the ball, then was able to pass it at pace to the player opposite her. Even though she understood exactly what her coach wanted to achieve, Rocky longed to see Roy and check out how he was feeling. But the men's team, who had just played and come off, were still in the dressing rooms. She would have to wait. Wait and concentrate. Football. Only football. This was something that worked for Rocky. If she was troubled or distracted, even unhappy, she could use focusing on football alone to bring calm to her mind, to try to be a tiny bit happier. And by focusing on the ball, not her thoughts, she managed to control and pass the ball perfectly every time. While some of the other players needed two touches or tried to be a bit too flash, Rocky gave 100% to the basics. After the passing, the players were asked to run a few laps of the pitch, nice and gentle, to warm down before they travelled back to the airport. Caught up in the training now, Rocky sensed someone running alongside her and looked up, hoping it was Roy, her brother. It was Serena Heracles. Boss, she said. You are okay, Rocky? Thanks, yes. They jogged a few paces side by side. You have go good focus, her manager said. Thanks, boss. I see you, Heracles said. I imagine you worry about your brother. I see, though, you can still play precise football. And this tells me clearly when we need you, when we are under the most pressure in a game, I can rely on you. You understand me? I can see what you're capable of, great things. And I will need you, Rocky. Rocky nodded and felt a shudder of excitement. She breathed in and she didn't want to betray how emotional she was feeling now her coach was so positive about her part in the team. She wanted to keep it all in for now. Thanks boss, she said again. Then reaching the far end of the pitch together where the incidents had happened earlier in the game, Rocky saw a banana on the pitch. She stooped to pick it up and held it in front of her. How do you feel about that? Heracles asked, studying Rocky's face. Rocky didn't know how to answer. She always wanted to give the best reply to her coach, to impress her, but this was harder. How do I feel that some of my brother's teammates and friends, Vernon and Asif and Lofty, had bananas thrown at them and monkey noise shouted at them because of the colour of their skin? She asked herself. The sky was dark now. The floodlights were still on, and all Rocky could see was a ghost of the mountains behind the city. Rocky looked at the banana. I don't know, she said. Upset, angry, ashamed. I'm feeling a few things, and I don't think there's one word for them. Serena Heracles nodded. Good answers to a difficult question, she said. Maybe I should ask a better one. What does it make you want to do? Help make it stop, Rocky said without thinking. A quick answer and a good one. How do you want to make it stop? Her boss said. Rocky felt a sense of panic. Questions like this were hard. She was worried she would say the wrong thing. But questions like this needed answering too. She knew that. She would say what came into her mind. And if someone thought it was wrong, they could tell her and she might change her mind. Better that than to say what you thought people wanted to hear. Better to be honest. She wasn't scared of being corrected or of learning. Also, she wanted to find out how her coach felt. How did all of this make her feel? By standing up to it, standing with those it's happening to, Rocky said, calling it out. Serena Heracles nodded, that's good, and will you do that? Rocky said, I will. Then, as they turned again, Rocky saw her brother at the far side of the stadium, emerging from the tunnel, flanked by Vernon, Elliot and Lofty Peak. 
who had a bandage on his head. She couldn't help but stare over. Can I go over? She said. I'm sorry, I want to see my friends, my brother. Yes, yes, go. Tossing the banana to the sidelines, Rocky ran across the pitch and smiling at her brother first, gave Lofty then Vernon a hug. Are you okay, she said, stepping back and looking at them as her brother stood by her side. Yes, thanks, Rocky, they both replied. Rocky knew they weren't okay. Both Vernon and Lofty looked tired, really tired. Now, more of the women's team came over to chat with the men, giving Rocky a chance to speak to Roy. She looked at his forehead where the banana had hit, hit, hit him and reached out and touched it. There was a red mark, but the skin hadn't been broken. So how are you then? She asked. Roy shrugged and made a face she knew well from all the years they'd been together as children. A crumpled face with a pretend smile. The kind of face she'd seen and would turn to call mum or dad to come and help. But here they were, adults pretty much, hundreds of miles away from home, having to deal with stuff themselves. You did the right thing, Rocky said to her brother. Coming off the pitch, no one ever does that. But you did, and I'm proud of you all. Thanks, Roy said, staring into the intense light of the floodlights, his irises like pinheads. Lofty and Vernon had the idea. I thought it was the right thing to do, he went on. We all did. It was a team decision. A good one, Rocky said. We're out of Europe, Roy added. I know. We're not, I might never play in Europe again, he said. You might not. Rocky agreed. They shared a long, comfortable silence. Did you see us all turning our backs, Rocky asked. Roy's eyes lit up for a second. Yeah, that was good. Priscilla's idea, Rocky said. Great idea, Rocky's voice. Roy's voice tailed off. Another silence. Rocky felt like she should say something. Her brother had done something good, but he felt bad. He needed, to be posit he needed her to be positive. But if you do play in Europe again, Rocky told him, and I'm pretty sure you will. You might not have to face that kind of rubbish again because of what Lofty and Vernon and Asif and you and all the others just did. You reckon, Roy said. Rocky remembered what Serena Heracles had said to her. How do you make it stop? By standing up to it, calling it out. I do, she said. And if you ever play in Europe again, you and the others can all be proud of what you did. That's better than any goal or trophy or anything. I've been your little sister for 17 years. I've seen you do all sorts of amazing things. And even though I take the mick out of you and all that, I've always been proud of you. But what you and the others just did out there, that's the thing that's made me the most proud, Rocky said. Now Rocky saw Asif standing alone, staring into the empty stands. I'm off to see if Asif is all right, Rocky said to a brother. Are you all right? I'll survive, Roy nodded, and thanks. For what? For what you just said, Roy said it was nice. Rocky smiled and gave her brother a friendly kick on the back of his leg and went to speak to Asif. Yeah, I guess well, in there we can see so much character work between sort of like, yeah, in Roy, and, but mostly obviously Rocky. And yeah. like, how do you start writing and shaping characters like Rocky when you, when you approach sort of writing that segment of the book? How do you think about yeah. what they do? And well, with, I mean, with Roy, like, like I said before, he was kind of determined. He was, he was the footballer who never got booked. You know, he was always kind, always thoughtful. And occasionally in the comics, he'd lose it a bit, but he always came back to being steady and predictable Roy. Whereas, whereas Rocky's, Rocky's sort of like can go off on one. And if she gets too, too sort of hot-headed, she really can, she can, she can do good things and challenge fiercely but she can make mistakes and have to recover from that. And that's what we're all like, isn't it? We all, we all, we all react to things and sometimes it's a good reaction and sometimes we judge it wrong. And that, that's normal. And when that happens, you just apologise. And she, she is good at apologising when she needs to be. But I bet I, I, her character, I, I used to watch um, an Australian soap with my wife a few years ago. Um, and um, there was this character on it who was a lot, that way, like sort of like really wanting to mean well, but tripping up quite frequently and causing minor catastrophes. And then I sort of built her around that and then built her sort of built her up with other other characters. Like I've read some, I've read quite a few um, footballers biographies and autobiographies. And so Megan Rapinoe, the, the American um, footballer, and probably the best. 
Yeah. <laughs> this one, like any Aluko who used to play for England, her book, they don't um, teach this. So I kind of, I kind of blended um, a TV character with real people from real life. I think, I don't think there's any problem with that. As a writer, your characters, you don't have to create original people. Base it on someone, a, t- a character from a film or TV, a friend, someone you know, um, <coughs> excuse me. And it, it sort of, it's much easier to build a character and make them three-dimensional and believable um, in doing that. Whereas if you have to start them from scratch, it's hard. So yeah, she's part American footballer, part British footballer, part Australian soap star. Brilliant. So now we've heard a bit about what goes on um, in the Roy of the Rovers books uh, and sort of how the characters come to life. We've now got a pack uh, sort of made especially for you, an activity pack that can be used in the classroom or at home where you can create and write about your very own Roy of the Rovers characters. Uh, Tom, do you want to tell us what's inside? Yeah, there's just lots of advice on how to write and how to make up characters, like how to draw a character and, and create them as a feel like a person, a bit like a bit like what I was talking about before and like how to develop how to develop a story. And it's just th- these tips are really useful because um, if you it's hard facing a blank page of paper and trying to write a story. But if you've got a few of these techniques and, and ways of, of getting into writing a story and a character, they can be really useful. So check them out, because I certainly find having tools to help me write is a really good way of overcoming the, the fear of a blank page, which I've already spoken about. Absolutely. And even if you're, you're not looking to create your own Roy the Rovers character, there's a fun football quiz in there as well for you to enjoy and test your, your football knowledge. Yeah, which is great, isn't it? Because everyone loves a quiz. I certainly yeah. do. <laughs> oh, everyone loves a quiz. Now it's whizzed past like a Roy the Rovers rocket goal that almost brings us to the end of our virtual assembly. So this summer, if you're looking to do the summer reading challenge or just looking for a good book to get stuck into, remember the Roy of the Rovers book series. We now have 16 books in total in the series, and that includes two new books out this summer. So we have the £100 million game graphic novel starring Roy of the Rovers, where he faces his biggest and toughest challenge yet, both on and off the pitch. And then we also have Game Changer, the fantastic novel starring Rocky of the Rovers, from author Tom uh, that you've heard so much about in this assembly where Rocky also has to face some tough challenges and wonder where her footballing future lies. Uh, They're both really exciting books. The whole series is full of fantastic football action and definitely will make your summer an eventful one. Now if you want to move beyond reading and have got a taste for writing after using the activity pack then another thing you can do this summer is enter our fantastic comic creation competition uh, thanks to our new comic Monster Fun. Uh, This is a really exciting competition uh, where one of you could enter your story ideas into the comic where it could be turned into an actual comic strip in a future issue. So that's right, you can get major bragging rights over your friends in the playground by having your very own comic out there in the world. Really exciting, really fun but make sure you enter this summer. That's all we have time for. So thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to watch this again, the video will be up on YouTube uh, for you to revisit uh, whenever you want, either in the classroom or at home. Uh, We hope you've enjoyed joining us and be sure to kick off your reading with Roy the Rovers. So it's uh, bye from me and uh, Tom. Goodbye from me as well. Thank you for watching and all the best with your reading and writing. Cheers. See you later. Thanks. Bye.